Right, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Milo Stergo. I'm a product manager on the Alexa for Business team. Uh, and I'm super excited to talk to you today about how you can bring Alexa for Business to your meeting rooms. Um, before we dive in, let's do a quick poll. Uh, who has played around with Alexa for Business already? Okay, a few. Um, so in this session, I want to start with giving an introduction why we think voice becomes such an um, important new interface to interact with uh, applications and, and systems. Um, and then we dive more into what Alexa for Business can do in meeting rooms and how you can set it up, uh, followed by a demo. Um, and then uh, I invited Scott Rudet from, our, from, the, from the Amazon Global IT team to talk more about how he brought Alexa for Business to 800 of his meeting rooms. <coughs> And then, uh, as last, uh, we have Sunita, who's an engineer on my team, uh, talk about how you can build your own experiences using Alexa uh, that, that you can use in your meeting room. Okay, let's talk a little bit about voice. Um, who remembers some of these um, systems, devices? When I was a kid, I remember that, that early Macintosh machine very well, because I got very excited uh, when, I, when I found out that I can use the text-to-speech text to functionality and I could type in things and the computer starts speaking it out. And of course, I couldn't talk back. And to have a conversation with an, uh, as a human being, it's much, much more like this. As a human being, we have personality, we have history, we have context when we have conversations. And when you look in... Um, in the last few decades in, in the computing uh, era, we went through the, all these major waves of innovation, but so far the technology didn't really catch up to have conversations with us. And it's really in the last five years, for all, had a massive amount of innovation in deep neural networks, uh, natural language understanding, machine learning, that we're finally, uh, have finally there and we can have conversations with, with machines. So at Amazon, have we really believe that voice becomes the next major disruptor uh, in, in computing. So in 2014, we launched the first Amazon Echo uh, with Alexa in the cloud um, as, as the brains. And since then, it really changed how people uh, interact with their house, run their household, uh, setting timers, accessing information, uh, their bank account information, uh, and maybe ordering pizza even. Um, of course, uh, interacting, uh, controlling their lives, etc. So a couple of years ago, we started playing, okay, what can Alexa do when we bring her to the workplace? Have we have a lot of these day-to-day -day tasks, and can, can Alexa basically simplify some of these tasks? So that, that's where we started. And um, the goal, really, the vision is making Alexa that, that smart, intelligent assistant in, in the workplace. Um, and helping with uh, connecting you to your coworkers, simplifying uh, scheduling of, 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 of meetings, those type of things. Another piece of feedback that we re received from a lot of customers is, can we use Alexa in our meeting rooms? Um, so that was one of the first use cases uh, where, we, where we started. And I'm sure some of you <laughs> remember this type of tables in your meeting rooms. Cables everywhere, different type of devices, remote controls, and at the start of the meeting, you have to juggle with the different systems to get it to work. Um, and, and taking that broader meetings in general as a team, um, just already scheduling it, finding uh, the availability of multiple people, then also finding an available room are all pretty hard problems then you have, to, hey, you, st you have to, you walk into the room, you have to start it, interact with the equipment. Often, hey, meeting rooms are not all, all the same equipment, so hey, one time you have to use with this touch panel, then you have to interact with the remote control. So it's really when we started, like, can we make voice that natural interface to interact with, with the equipment? And we started really with the use case. Just want to walk into the room, say, Alexa, join my meeting. It knows the equipment in the room, it knows what meeting is happening, and it just magically uh, uh, works. Um, and then we started adding additional use cases. Okay, I need to have an, 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 a meeting room for my 
uh, ad hoc meeting, I just need a room for 15 minutes. Can I just walk in into a room, it looks available, can I just ask Alexa if it's available and book it on the fly? Um, and if there's an issue with the room, can I just say Alexa, call the help desk and she will place the call for me to get help. So that were a lot of the, 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 the first set of use cases we started with. And as we started to deploy it at, at customers like Condé Nast, who deployed it in their, in their meeting rooms in the, in the World Trade Center in New York, um, had uh, to, to control their Zoom room uh, systems, they also had the same vision as us, and they also started building out more of these uh, experiences where they integrate with their own systems. That's so the example uh, where hey, there's an issue with the room. They said, no, we actually want to file a ticket into our uh, JIRA system. So we started helping them building an integration with their JIRA backend system uh, to file these tickets. And, and Sunita will, will, will show uh, some, of these, uh, some of these integrations. Um, and there are many more. Had this morning, we had uh, Fender Guitars uh, in, the, in the keynote. So that's another customer that, that started a journey with us, the bringing Alexa to all their meeting rooms, starting building more skills that, that are useful in their workplace. So how can I get started? How do I bring Alexa to, to my meeting room? Um, before we dive in, it's, it's important to understand some of the concepts that we have uh, defined in Alexa for Business. And uh, when you go into the Alexa for Business console, hey, in, in the AWS Management Console, uh, we, we have sort of two key concepts, sort of device deployments, uh, deployment methods. So one method is what we call enrolled users. Um, which is, I have an Alexa identity, I have an Alexa device at home, I have an Alexa account. Um, you can connect that, link that account with Alexa for Business and get access to additional functionality, like private skills. Maybe my company built an integration with our SAP backend system or Salesforce. Now, because I linked my Alexa identity to, uh, to Alexa for Business, I can access that skill from my device. Um, the other model um, that applies here in the meeting room uh, space is what we call shared devices. So shared devices are not tied to a specific person, but, but are tied to a location. It could be a meeting room, it can be a common area, a lobby. Uh, and that's basically what, what, we, uh, what this, this picture showed. So this is the, the hierarchy for a shared device. So we have a location, in this case our meeting room, that has one or multiple devices. And when you have multiple devices in the room and you, you say her name, multiple devices can pick it up, but because they're all assigned to that same location, only one response, or the, the, the one that's nearest to you will respond with the answer. Um, a room is always associated with a room profile. And a room profile contains common settings that for the people who use Alexa at home, hey, you have things like address, uh, what's the time zone, and, and a bunch of other settings. How does she respond to, to weather, as it's Celsius or Fahrenheit? Uh, so that are common settings that are uh, defined in the room profile. Then we also, every room is associated with a skill group. And a skill group is basically the collection of third-party skills or my private skills that I want to make available in these, in these rooms. And for the people who use Alexa at home, you might be familiar with the feature where you can just say, Alexa, enable the Jeopardy skill, and Alexa automatically turns it on. That's not a feature when we talk to customers that they want to enable uh, when you deploy Alexa in an, in an enterprise setting. So we enabled, uh, through the concept of the, the skill groups, the capability that only the skills that you select, had a curated list that you define, are available on that device. If you ask Alexa, hey, enable this specific skill, it says, sorry, I'm a, I'm a managed device, you can't do that uh, through your voice, contact your, your IT administrator. Um, so that's the, the key concept that's, that we have in Alexa for Business when you deploy a device um, to your organization. So the basic steps to bring Alexa to a meeting room, it st all starts with the device. We assign the device to a location, 
We enable the skills that we want to have, have available. That can be skills that can control my existing video conference equipment, uh, skills that interact with my room, room reservation systems. Um, can also be an hand integration with, with my, uh, my Office 365 or G Suite calendar system. So, what, um, so that's all the technical setup. But now hey, users need to start using it. And voice in the workplace is a very new concept. Probably, hey, maybe these people ha use Alexa at home and know sort of what, what, what they can do with it. But now they see a device on the table of the, of the meeting room. And it's really like, OK, what can it do? So it's very important as we learn for all these deployments with customers, education of users. What can they say? How does Alexa work? How do I mute her? Um, so that are very important things as part of the deployment. And, and Scott will talk more about it, what are some of the learnings uh, that we went through with the internal deployment at Amazon and how we educated users and, and basically dro uh, drove up the, the, the adoption. And then, of course, it's like we want to measure, improve, and, and explore or new experiences uh, uh, to, yeah, to, to make users more productive. So it all starts with an Echo device. Um, and hey, you can buy a $50 Echo Dot. Um, and um, for the people who use it at home, setting up one Echo Dot is pretty easy. Hey, you go to normally to the Alexa app, you, you connect it to the Wi-Fi, and you're ready to go. But now you want to bring it to 500 rooms, maybe just 50 rooms. Then it becomes a whole different uh, problem. So, when we launched Alexa for Business last year, we, we built a an, tool and bulk provisioning tool to get these devices onto the network and register them with Alexa for Business. And we call that the device setup tool. And you can just plug in these devices, they turn up in setup mode, and the, and, and the device setup tool automatically detects the devices and, and, and configures them. So when we launched Alexa for Business last year, we only had support for these personal Wi-Fi networks uh, that we all have at home. And we got a lot of requests from customers. Hey, we don't want to connect them to our uh, inter, um, um, unsecure Wi-Fi network. We want to get them on our enterprise uh, Wi-Fi network because better manageable or um, had the, the password is rotating of our guest network or we have kept a portal, a lot of uh, different reasons. So. A couple of months ago, we launched enterprise Wi-Fi support for these Echo devices. And using the device setup tool, um, you, you can get them on, on that enterprise Wi-Fi network. And how that works is um, we only support the, the TLS, the EAP TLS uh, enterprise Wi-Fi mode. And um, to get these certificates, or to create a certificate, we integrate, we are using the AWS Certificate Manager um, integrated with our on-prem um, uh, certificate authority. And uh, the, 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 key, um, the certificate manager is basically creating a new certificate every time we set up the device. So the device set, set up tool connects to the device, request a new certificate, pushes us on the device, and then uh, uh, reboots the device, and the device uses that certificate uh, to connect to your network. Um, so now we have the device on the network, but we deploy it in hell, all these conference rooms. We want to make sure that it continues to work. So that was another piece of feedback we, we, we got from customers. How do we monitor these devices? So another feature we launched a couple of months ago is the integration with, uh, with Amazon CloudWatch. So you can create uh, CloudWatch metrics that show you had the devices that are, on, uh, that are online or offline, and hey, you can use this, 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 the, the CloudWatch tools that you're familiar with uh, to send notifications when a device uh, uh, shows, uh, shows offline. So, after you go through that process, devices show up in the Alexa for Business console. And the next thing we need to do is, okay, we're gonna create, define our locations where we want to bring these uh, devices and assign a device to, to each room. You can do that through the AWS console. You can also use uh, the CLI, the SDKs too. If you have hundreds of rooms, you probably prefer that method. 
Okay, now we have a device, it's assigned to a location, what's next? So we want to bring it to our meeting room, and often hey, these meeting rooms have a calendar associated with it for uh, scheduling of the room. Um, so you can hook up your Exchange, your Office 365, your G Suite, uh, G Suite calendar with Alexa for Business, and linking your calendar to Alexa for Business allows you to use it to automatically dial into meetings. It also allows you to do room reservations. Um, I think many of you here in the audience use Office 365, so let's talk a little bit about that uh, specific setup. So to link your Office 365 uh, tenant to, to Alexa for Business, there are sort of two modes how you can uh, link it. Um, we have what we call the application permissions mode. Uh, which is the easiest one to set up, but it will give you Alexa for Business access to all the calendars in your Office 365 tenant. Um, um, so you, you hit the link button and it will prompt you, hey, sign in with a an, 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 an global administrator account to, to link it up. Um, many enterprises gave us the feedback, no, the permissions are too broad. Can you introduce a more uh, um, an, an, an mode where it's more fine-grained permissions and you only get access to these specific resources or room calendars that we want to enable uh, uh, in our pilot? So that, that's the other mode where we use a service account with only permissions to a subset of the, of the resources uh, that Alexa for Business will read from. Um, and, and to do that, hey, you have to run a bunch of PowerShell commands to, um, to enable or give Alexa for Business access to these uh, uh, room calendars. So the next thing, um, what we want to do, if we want to hey, use Alexa for Business to interact with our video conferencing equipment, or even use it as an echo device, uh, as a speakerphone, because that's also possible, um, is setting up our conferencing provider. And the conferencing provider setup is used for a few, a few things. So first of all, it has all the, the basically dial-in information. What's the, what's the SIP address that I need to call? Um, it also has the, uh, the, the parsing rules. If we go to the calendar and find, hey, here is an Amazon Chime meeting with business logic to figure out, okay, this is the ID, this is the PIN, this is the SIP address, et cetera. Um, the other thing what these settings are being used for is to change the, 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 VUI, the VUI, as we say, the voice user interface. For example, if I walk into the room, there's no scheduled meeting, I ask Alexa to, to start a new meeting, she will give me the prompt, as you see in the slide, hey, what's your, and then your provider name, uh, meeting ID. And then it can also, if, uh, hey, for example, PIN is required or is optional, she can also prompt for that information. So that's the provider setup. The next thing is if you have equipment already in your, in your meeting room, you probably want to uh, have Alexa interact with these systems. So we support the most popular video conferencing systems. Here we have the, the, the Cisco units, how all the popular Cisco systems are supported, Polygon Group Series, uh, but also more these, had these, these software-based uh, solutions like Zoom rooms, had Ring Central rooms, um, or the, the, the integrated in-room systems had like the Crestron that can not only control the, the video conferencing equipment, but can also control the projectors, the lights, and it allows you to, to build much more deeper integrations um, um, between Alexa and, 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 and the systems in the, in the, in the meeting room. So uh, there's a, a, a difference in, in setting these up. So for, when you're using these Cisco systems, they're typically connected on your local network. They don't have a connectivity to the cloud. So how does Alexa interact with these systems to start a call or, or, or join a meeting? And um, to control these systems, we, we built a component what we call the Alexa for Business Gateway. And the gateway is an, an on-prem piece of software a piece of software that you run within your network that basically receives commands from the cloud and then connects to the, 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 the uh, Cisco uh, uh, system in the room to uh, initiate a dial command or send an, send an hang-up command. Um, and to show you how that flow works, 
So in this case, here we deployed an echo dot in the meeting room. I give it the command to have, for example, start a meeting. Alexa, I had a command goes to the Alexa cloud where we do all the, had the, the, the speech recognition and the natural language understanding. And it detects, okay, this is an intent to join a call or join a meeting. So it will send it down to the Alexa for Business conferencing service. In the Alexa for Business conferencing service, we have the, 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 the integration with the calendar systems. So we go to the calendar for that particular room. And we, we have the context, this device and it's in room 105. So it will go to the calendar for room 105. We, we read the event from the calendar that's happening for the current time, figure out what the dial-in is, and then send a message to an S, uh, SQSQ. The gateway that runs within our network is listening to that SQSQ, picks up the message, and basically um, has, sees what's the, the, the Cisco system in this room and uh, connects to that uh, Cisco system to, to initiate the call. If you have have many systems to control. You can run these gateways in, in different uh, regions. You can have uh, multiple gateways to make them uh, uh, more high, uh, scalable or, or high available. Um, so that's how we integrate with the, the systems that are not cloud connected. If you're using Zoom rooms, which has already a connection to the cloud, um, it works a little bit different, and it's also slightly easier to set up. So same concept, ask Alexa to start a, uh, start a meeting, it will go to the Alexa cloud, have we processed the intent, and um, in this case, have we send it down to the Zoom, Zoom for Alexa skill that, the, 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 uh, that Zoom uh, built and is available through the Alexa skill store. And from their skill, they talk to their own cloud service and they, in their cloud service, they know how to control the Zoom room system in, in your meeting room. So that's the basic steps we, you go through to, to get Alexa for Business deployed in your meeting room. And to give you a, um, a quick demo, um, So this is what the Alexa for Business console looks like. As you see, I onboarded already a bunch of devices earlier. Um, now let's go through the, uh, through the process to, uh, through this, uh, the setup process to bring that device to a meeting room. And it's actually pretty straightforward. So let's create an, an, a new room, let's call it demo. I hook it up to my Office 365 calendar, and I didn't go through the Office 365 linking process, but I will show it in a minute. Um, and then I pick my room profile. Um, as you see, I have a bunch of room profiles, and these are all uh, Amazon building names. What we re typically recommend when you create a room profile, to create a an, an profile per building. So as I said, that's the address settings, which makes a lot of sense to do it per building. We also use that concept for some of the new features that, that uh, um, we're working on. For example, to know when you ask Alexa to find an available room, uh, uh, she will use the room profile to know, hey, you're in this building, so I will only search for available rooms in this particular building. Um, so let's do the Midtown profile. Here are some of the settings. Uh, that, that probably you're familiar uh, with uh, when you use uh, Alexa at home. So the next step is picking the device that we want to assign to this room. So these are all my devices I, in my account that aren't assigned yet. And now, what are the skills, had a third party skills that they want to uh, make, make available? So I created a bunch of skill groups already with had the different systems that we have uh, and, and some generic meeting room skills. So let's, uh, let's, pick a, uh, let's pick a skill group and then create a room. And now it, it assigns the device to the room, enables all the skills for that particular room and we're be, uh, ready to go. And now I can say, because I, I hooked it up to my calendar, I can say, Alexa, let's look in there. Sorry. So I can say, Alexa, is this room available? Alexa, is this room available? It's available until 4 p.m. Would you like to book it? Yes. 
Okay, I booked this room from now to 4 p.m. So that's I have one of the, the utterances I can use. I can also ask uh, who the organizer is if the, if the room was, was booked. I can book it for a future time. Um, and, and all the other skills that I enabled have through the skill group are now available on, on this device. If I also enable, for example, the Cisco skill or the Zoom room skill, I can start integrating, um, um, uh, inter have Alexa interact with these systems. So we went through this process by using the Echo Dot. Um, and one of the pieces of feedback that we got from customers is, we love this, this is great, but we try to get rid of hardware in our rooms. We don't want to add an additional device. So early in the year, we started working with manufacturers of video conferencing hardware to get Alexa integrated into these systems. So I brought a Polycom Trio device, uh, and that one, it's, it's still a beta device, has Alexa built in, and early next year we have more news on that. Um, so I don't need the Echo Dot anymore, it's just Alexa's built in, I download the new firmware, I register it with Alexa for Business, and as you probably have, uh, saw in my console, um, I have already a bunch of these Trio devices in, in my account, as you see here. Um, so once they are registered with Alexa for Business, the process is exactly the same. You assign it to a room, you assign a skill group, and it, and it works. And all the Alexa functionality you're familiar with, hey, all the standard questions, the time, is available on this device. Additionally, we'll build additional capabilities um, hey, that you can ask Alexa to call. Alexa, call David. David Smith or David Jones? David Smith. Calling David Smith's mobile. Okay, not connect. It's not registered to an, uh, an, an PBX system, but hey, you, yeah, you heard the dial tone. Um, and once it's connected, uh, I can hang up, I can increase volume, I can have basically have hands-free controls for most of these things on these devices. Hey, I can also say, Alexa, Join my meeting. Do you want to join the meeting demo Alexa on Trio? Yes. Welcome to Unified Conferencing. You are the first person to join the conference. And it's connected. Alexa. Hang up. So that, that are some of the integrations uh, that, that are available on these devices. And similar, this works in the same way or the same experience uh, when you use an Echo Dot to control your Cisco systems or your Zoom rooms, etc. Oh, let's switch back to... So um, to talk more through some of the, the, the experiences uh, um, Scott went through uh, at the internal deployment from uh, Amazon, I would like him to come on stage. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Milo. Hi, I'm Scott Rudat. I'm a program manager with Amazon's global IT department. And uh, today I'm going to share with you my experience uh, deploying Alexa for Business to 800 rooms inside Amazon. Um, but before I get into that, I'll give you a little bit of background uh, on my role. Uh, my team and I are responsible for the meeting experience standards. Uh, Amazon has a fleet of 9,000 meeting rooms globally. And so I've included this uh, maybe not so glamorous picture of our lab. But this is where it starts for us in bringing in new hardware, testing it, selecting the best hardware, building up standards. And those are what get deployed to Amazon meeting rooms. Um, the main focus of my team is to provide our customers with a frictionless meeting experience. We want to give them consistency no matter what building or room they're in. 
and we work as hard as we can to reduce the time to get your meeting up and running. Uh, so that's a little bit of context about me and my role. Uh, so last year, Milo approached me uh, to let me know about the launch of Alexa for Business. Um, I was, oops, my, yeah, I was a uh, mixed reaction to this. So I was excited. Uh, I was excited because I love experimenting with new hardware. Um, I was familiar with Echo and Alexa, and I was excited to try it out in the meeting context. But I was also pretty skeptical. Uh, I was skeptical that my customers would be comfortable using their voice to interact with meeting room systems. And I was also skeptical that uh, the Echo devices could reliably work with all the different hardware that we have across our meeting rooms. And I think some of my skepticism was also due to some, some personal pride that you know, the systems and the experience that we were already providing was, was good enough. Um, but Milo and I talked and we decided, uh, let's start by bringing it into our lab and see what we can, see what we can get working and go from there. Uh, so Milo introduced me to his A for B team, and we got to, got to know them. Uh, they taught us that the A for B already had built Microsoft Exchange calendar integration, which is what we use for resource booking at Amazon. Uh, they had already built Cisco, built and tested uh, Cisco skills, which interacted with the Cisco video conferencing hardware we use. Uh, we use Amazon Chime as our UC platform for meetings, and there was already a skill created for that. And they had built the gateway for communicating with our on-prem VC devices. So uh, in the lab, we were able to set all of that up and pretty easily get it up and running. And I think that's when we had the kind of the initial, uh, my team had the initial um, thought of, OK, there's, there's a lot of potential here. I, I can see why this is ready to pilot. And we agreed, uh, we agreed with Milo and the team that we would launch a pilot at Amazon. Now, we have a homegrown booking tool at Amazon called Amazon Meetings. And this is where customers can go to enter in their meeting participants. And the tool recommends the ideal uh, location and time based on availability. And so we wanted to interact with this group and bring them into the pilot so that we could also include skills uh, around room booking. So going into the pilot, uh, we were going to support utterances for Alexa start the meeting, Alexa end the meeting, and then a few uh, utterances related to room booking. So we launched the pilot in five Seattle buildings, uh, 800 rooms. We used uh, internal labor to discover the devices um, and install them in rooms. And we did light, uh, light change management. So we sent an email to our customers. We had uh, a wallpaper on the TV. And we said, you know, let's see what happens. We knew that we wanted to have data and understand how adoption was going. Uh, so in the Alexa for Business console, we set up uh, a tag. So when we're calling the Chime meeting bridge, uh, we added the AX tag to all of those calls. And that way, we could look at our call data records from our VC systems and know how many times uh, a Chime meeting had been joined using Alexa. And we did a similar thing uh, with our in-room systems. We added a QK tag to those calls. And that allowed us to build a dashboard where we could easily track uh, adoption week over week. So a few weeks after we had launched the pilot, uh, we started reaching out to our customers uh, to understand their experience. Uh, we sent out uh, surveys, and we scheduled uh, open houses in their building. The, the feedback that we got from, from these was easily fit into three groups. Uh, we had a group that was using it regularly, loved it. They were very vocal about that. We had another group who hadn't noticed the devices in the room. Uh, and our change management really hadn't reached them. And the third group, they noticed the devices, but they were withholding from using it because they had some concerns. They didn't know if it was approved, uh, if there was privacy concerns or InfoSec concerns. So they were, they were not using it yet. But we saw that even a few weeks after launch, we'd already reached 34% adoption. 
So 34% of our Chime meetings were being joined by saying, Alexa, start the meeting. And this was a lot higher, uh, faster than we were expecting. And so it really clued me in that uh, this was something our customers, uh, our customers were liking. So we, um, from those open houses and the customer feedback, we identified kind of the top likes and the top dislikes. Um, the top likes were the faster meeting start times. Uh, customers liked the convenience of not needing to manually enter the Chime meeting ID. And being able to find out who actually has the room booked was great and to kind of settle those uh, hallway disputes. Uh, the dislikes were, uh, as you can imagine, at Amazon, there's a lot of meetings where Alexa is the subject of the meeting and gets brought up quite a lot. And so sometimes Alexa would go off when you weren't intending to. Uh, so that was a dislike. And then uh, a lot of our devices were getting unplugged. And so people who wanted to use Alexa then had to go plug it back in. So that was, uh, those were the top two dislikes. And coming out of that, we, we identified three challenges that we wanted to go after. Um, there was a timeout issue that was happening with Exchange. And so sometimes when a customer would say, Alexa, start the meeting, uh, we weren't able to get the Chime meeting ID from Exchange in time to connect them, and they had to manually enter their PIN. So we wanted to figure out what was happening there and see if we could improve that. Um, additionally, we want to understand what is the motivation behind people unplugging devices? Why is that happening? And lastly, uh, we, we came across kind of a booking protocol issue in that uh, some people would reserve a room using a blank invite. And then they would create another invite with all their invitees and their content and their agenda. Uh, and that would have the Chime meeting ID. And so be, because of that booking protocol issue, you know, Alexa for Business wouldn't see uh, the Chime meeting information. So we wanted to see if we could address that through education with our customers. But uh, customer anecdotes are a focus for us. And reading through the customer feedback that we received, we, we received many really strongly worded customer anecdotes that, that showed us how passionate people were and how much they liked this new experience. So to continue to drive adoption and try to work on those challenges, uh, we increased our, uh, we improved our change management. So we. Uh, we used different channels than we had used originally. We, we wrote a, a better email. Uh, we did some posters and advertising in the buildings. We improved the signage in the room. We got a more eye-catching uh, graphic. And we rolled those out. Um, here's some examples of what those looked like. And uh, we started to see adoption continue to improve through these, through these methods. And we were starting to bring in some of those people who weren't aware of it originally or who had concerns. And we were able to address those concerns in the change management. So with adoption uh, steadily increasing, uh, we started to talk with Milo and his team about expanding the pilot. Uh, we wanted to learn some additional things from the pilot. We wanted to try some sites outside of Seattle, outside of the headquarters, and see what the behavior was like there. Uh, we wanted to try uh, gateways that were running in east and west regions at the same time. And we wanted to just experiment with some different cable management options. So routing the power cables through grommets under the table. We put some stickers out there to remind people you can hit the mute button, you don't have to unplug. And we even tried some uh, security enclosures. So the learnings for me from this pilot, uh, it only took six weeks for Alexa for Business adoption to surpass touch panel use. And so my Sorry, I don't know that one. <laughs> so uh, my skepticism was wrong, and I'm, I'm OK admitting that. Um, but even now, uh, adoption and usage of Alexa for Business is still greater than the touch panel. So it wasn't a fad. It wasn't the new thing that people wanted to try out. It's, it's been in steadily increasing. Um, going back to you know, the demo that Milo shared, uh, I learned that Alexa for Business lets me and my team enhance the meeting experience in an easier way than some of the methods that we've been trying in the past. So going back to that picture of our lab, you know, we have many different TVs in our environment. You know, we have uh, 
meeting room equipment that is a year old, that launched recently, three years old, five years old. And when you have hundreds of rooms or thousands of rooms, trying to roll out a consistent experience for your users when you have all these different types of technology, different software versions, different firmware versions, requires a very heavy engineering effort to, to make that work. And sometimes there's just incompatibility and it won't work at all. Uh, what, what I learned from this pilot was with a low cost device, we were able to provide a consistent experience across 800 rooms very quickly. <clears throat> so the next steps uh, within Amazon, um, I'm promoting uh, Alexa voice services in the, all of my manufacturer partners uh, hardware to add that in there, like Milo mentioned. Um, we're rolling out new skills. Uh, we're working with the A4B team on a report and issue skill that will let our customers uh, log tickets with, uh, when they find an issue with the meeting room. And uh, excitingly for us, we have signed up for a goal in 2019, and we're going to be bringing Alexa for Business to all of Amazon's meeting rooms. Thanks a lot. So yeah, super, super excited to work with, with Scott and his team to, to, to go through that exercise and capture a lot of these learnings. And, and, and we're now writing an adoption white paper that will share a lot of these back, best practices with, with other customers and, and also uh, uh, um, provide customers with some, some of these uh, assets to, to help discovery uh, have what you can do uh, in, in a meeting room. Um, as Scott mentioned, had they, they, when we started the pilot, had we built that, uh, that uh, and scale uh, for the um, uh, meeting room booking uh, with the, the, the internal tool that, that we use at Amazon, and, and now we are building more skills. And that's actually a pretty popular use case with, with, with other customers as well. Uh, I think Fender talked about uh, an, an skill this morning. Um, and, and we see that with most customers. So I invited uh, Sunita from, from our engineering team to talk more about what you can do with private skill and, and basically talk through the process of building such a skill. Um, sorry. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this session. I'm Sunita and I'm here to talk about how you can use voice to do more in the workplace. So before I begin, um, a little bit of history. About five years ago, we announced Alexa. We introduced customers to a world, wherever they go, they have access to the computer interface using their voice and voice alone. And soon after that, we recognized that in order to make Alexa more capable, to add more uh, capabilities, to make it, uh, give it more potential, we had to enable and empower developers to build capabilities for Alexa. And that's when we introduced the Alexa Skills Kit. Uh, today, we have over 10,000 developers that have over 50,000 skills in the marketplace. Companies can leverage these skills, and this is what we refer to as the private skills. Taking it one step further, with Alexa for Business, sorry, um, taking it one step further with Alexa for Business, uh, we have a new exciting way for companies to leverage skills, and that is called the private skills mode, where you can basically lock down the experience of skill. You can create custom skills for your organization. Um, so some examples of that would be um, Essentially, uh, consider a uh, so consider a private Q and A skill. You want to walk up to Alexa and say, Alexa, hey, what's the guest Wi-Fi password? Um, so we have seen some companies deploy private skills to their uh, warehouses and factories, uh, so they can provide their customers with employees with a more uh, hands-free interaction. So this is something we have noticed to be the most popular use case of Alexa, uh, Alexa for Business with companies today. Some of the other examples of private skills with companies we're seeing is a flash briefing skill. So for those of you who have Alexa at home, you know that with flash briefing, you can actually pick your favorite news sources and get information from that every morning um, as part of your news feed. So what companies are doing is they're providing company-wide announcements and updates using these private skills um, as part of, and this shows up in the employee's news feed every day while they're also checking their weather. A really popular private skill that we have seen is the help desk skill. 
Um, so you all know there's this 8 cross 11 printout in a meeting room which says, hey, if, uh, if something's broken, if something's not working as expected, uh, please call this number or send an, email, uh, send an email to help desk. Not a lot of us really follow through that. So what we've done with help desk, uh, what we've seen with help desk skill is that you can just walk into a room and say, Alexa, ask help desk, uh, uh, tell help desk that the projector is broken. And it's as simple as that. You're just using your voice, which is a very natural way for you to interact. And, and then a ticket is uh, cut to help desk and they figure out the rest. So this is an example of a skill which is actually helping businesses run more efficiently. It's an example where you can use voice to actually interact with your digital services. One of, uh, soon, we've actually announced this uh, recently, uh, Milo talked about this earlier too, with room booking. Um, so one of the, uh, soon you'll be seeing uh, some, you'll, you'll be seeing some uh, support for actually uh, interacting with your internal room booking systems. You can use Alexa to say, Alexa, book this room. You can ask Alexa to check for reservations, uh, to check for availability. And this makes it even more convenient because you don't have to walk into a meeting room and then real realize you don't have a booking. Uh, you don't need to then pull up your laptop and uh, go uh, find an empty room or book the, the current room. You can just use your voice to do that. And it makes it so simple. It makes it, it saves you a lot of time. So what exactly is different between a private skill and a public skill? Very little. Uh, to abstract away the complexity of speech recognition, uh, NLU processing, and machine learning, uh, so that developers can focus completely on creating compelling voice experiences, we introduced Alexa Skills Kit. Alexa Skills Kit is a collection of self-service APIs and tools. Um, and essentially, with that, the build process between private skills and public skills stays the same. Uh, the only thing that changes is when you deploy a skill, uh, when you deploy a public skill, you're deploying it to the marketplace. When you're deploying a private skill, you're deploying it to your organization. And then you can use that to publish it to your employees, to uh, specific rooms or type of rooms within your facilities. It shows you that as an admin, you have access to control or lock down the experience that your devices are, uh, have access to. Before we dive any further, let's talk a little bit about voice interaction models. So every skill has an interaction model. That is, uh, it defines the request that the skill can handle and the, you, the words that you can use, that the customer can use to invoke those requests. When you define this model on your own uh, as a skill developer, it's called the custom model. So a custom skill can handle any kind of request as long as your code, uh, as long as you have the code to handle that request and you have appropriate data in the model um, for the customer to know how to invoke that request. So this is the most flexible kind of skill you can build, but it's also really complex because it's more complex because uh, you're essentially, you have to define the entire voice user interaction model. So an example of that is, uh, let's say you want to say, Alexa, um, you want to build your own custom uh, help desk skill. You say, Alexa, ask help desk to um, do X or do Y. You have to define how a customer would probably invoke the help desk skill. And that's where the complexity comes in in defining the model. The Alexa Skills Kit also provides you predefined models in which the possible requests and utterances are already defined for you. These are less flexible compared to custom skills, uh, but the benefit here is it's simple because all you need to do is actually, uh, you, you have the voice user interface defined for you. You only have to write the uh, code to actually handle those requests. Um, this is also easy for the end customer to invoke because uh, with the custom model, you have to say, Alexa, ask dash, which is your invocation name, to do something for you. With a predefined model, you just walk into a room, say, Alexa, start the meeting. Sorry, I don't know that. Um, sorry about that. Uh, it's as simple as just saying, Alexa, do X for me. Alexa, what's the weather? Those are, those are predefined voice models. Let's look at the anatomy. So for a private skill, or even for a public skill, what's handling your skill request is either a Lambda function, which is an AWS uh, compute service, or it could also be a service that you have hosted in your company's uh, on-premise network. 
And those skills can access whatever internal systems that you want to voice enable as a customer. So companies are now able to build cool things like Alexa, tell help desk the projector is not working. Um, this is, uh, I'll do a quick demo of this and you'll know what I'm talking about. Alexa, open service desk. Hey Sunita, welcome to IT service desk. What can I do for you? For example, you can say, create an incident. Create an incident? I am happy to help with that. Just quick question, how do you want this incident reported? Critical, high, medium or low priority? Medium. Now, in a few words please give me few details regarding your issue. The projector is broken. Incident INCO 011228 was created successfully. I can text this information to you. What is your cell phone number? If you do not want to text, please say cancel. Cancel? All right, so let's actually go and look at ServiceNow, which is where my request gets created. All right, I'm sorry about this. Um, but essentially, if you can look beneath that window, um, you see the ServiceNow page, and that's where your issue goes and gets reported. Um, back to... All right, so this is an example of a skill where you have to define the custom voice model. So a lot of these help desk skill use cases, you actually need to know the exact conference room where the request is coming from. Because you don't want, you don't want the end customer that's reporting the issue to actually have to figure out exactly where this, uh, what, what the room name is or what the room ID is. So for that, we have something called the Resolve Room API in Alexa for Business, uh, skills, uh, Alexa for Business uh, SDK. So with this, uh, you, get con you get information about what the room name is and what the room ID is. And this is really helpful when you're reporting an issue to your help desk or service desk. I'm actually going to walk you through an example that is up on GitHub, and we'll see how the voice mo what the voice model looks like, and we'll see how we invoke the Resolve Room API. Um, so we do have some skills up on uh, the Alexa for Business GitHub repository, and this gives you an idea of how to get started. Um, so this is a location-aware help desk skill. I hope you all can see. All right. So if you go to models, we can actually see what the voice interaction model looks like. The invocation name for this is help desk. We have a slot called issue, and by slot, it's essentially what comes after uh, Alexa ask help desk. So that is what the issue that you report is captured within. So some samples of it is um, the HDMI cable in here is broken, I'm hungry, uh, the door won't open, etc. So these are just some samples. So when a customer looks at this, they, kind, they know exactly how to invoke the skill. Let's look at the Lambda function, which is essentially what handles your request. So we have defined the Alexa for Business uh, SDK. And when you get an issue, when you get a request, we call the Resolve Room API, which then, when, when, the, when that's gone through, you get, you, will get, you get access to the room name, and then you have the reported issue. And what the skill is doing is it's actually posting this message in a Chime or a Slack or a, a Teams chat room. And that is monitored by Help Desk. So this is a really simple skill, and if you look at it, you can actually uh, build on top of it. You can in integrate it with your custom uh, help desk system in your company. Let's go back. All right. So we talked about, we looked at an example of a custom model, right? Let's look at what Alexa for Business has predefined uh, what kind of models Alexa for Business has predefined in meeting room use cases. So 
Milo earlier talked about how you can control conferencing, conference room equipments, right? We have out-of-the-box support for Cisco and Polychrome group series. Uh, Zoom has built an implementation on top of us using our APIs. So we have APIs for join meeting, join scheduled meeting, discovering devices, and end meeting. And you can use these APIs to integrate with your custom uh, meeting room systems. We recently announced that Alexa for Business users can now check availability and reserve uh, rooms, reserve uh, slots in a room uh, based on using their voice. And this out-of-the-box integration is with Office, Microsoft Office 365, Microsoft Exchange, and Google G Suite. We do have custom room booking systems, and Scott called this out earlier. At Amazon, we use Amazon Meetings. And to integrate with that, we um, have APIs which uh, we can use to essentially search for available uh, reservations and also to create a reservation. The difference between what uh, the difference between the custom model in this case and the uh, pre-built model is that in custom model, if you're building your own skill, you essentially say, Alexa, ask meetings to book room, book this room. But with our pre-built uh, voice user interface, you can now say, Alexa, book this room, and it's as simple as that. Let me do a quick demo of it. Is this room available? This room is booked until 4.15 p.m. Book this room. This room is booked until 4.15 p.m. Book this room at 4.30 p.m. Don't know if I press that. Book this room at 4.30 p.m. How long would you like to book it for? 30 minutes. OK, I booked this room from 4.30 PM to 5 PM. And this is essentially an example of um, a skill that we have written to integrate uh, with a custom room booking system. So these are some APIs. Um, just because if you want to look up availabilities in your custom room booking system, you can look that up by using the search availability request. Um, what you're specifying is uh, duration of how long you want a, an available slot. Um, you're looking for uh, an available slot right now, and that's when you say type instant. The responses that you get back um, gives you a status of all the meeting events, up upcoming meeting events. It just gives you a status which says free or busy, and it tells you that it's available or uh, it's available for say 60 minutes. Um, and it gives you something called the reservation token, which is what you use to then go and create a reservation request. You can specify the duration there, and you can specify the reservation token that you got in your search availability uh, response, where it said this is a slot that's empty. So we're really excited to see where uh, you will take Alexa, what skills you'll add in your organization. Um, to help you with that, there are some resources that we can point you to. So there is the console page. Um, if you go look at that, you can play around with it and get an idea of how to get started. Um, you have, we looked at a Git, uh, GitHub repository for Alexa for Business. So that's a good place to get started if you want to just uh, look at some examples of skills that we've already built. Um, there's the AWS serverless application repository. Um, there are a lot of blueprints here uh, of Lambda functions, and you can just use that to get started. Uh, there are Alexa skill uh, Lambda functions that you can use uh, for reference. We also have something called the This Is My Skill video series. So if, you, if you've built a cool skill, um, we want you to uh, let us know, send us a video of it, send us a link, um, and cool new features, cool new skills will get featured on the Alexa for Business website. Thank you. Um, we're going to hang around if you have any questions.